welcome to Vintage Tech Spotlight. Today's episode is featuring the old home movie classic, 8mm Film. 8mm Film was introduced in 1932 by Eastman Kodak. Initially, it was simply a black and white home movie format, but as the popularity increased, uh, pre-filmed reels of film were marketed, and in 1936, color was added to Kodachrome home movies. As a general rule, 8mm film ages very well. However, in some specific storage circumstances, like being in a high heat, a high humidity, and a high salt environment, has a tendency to make film brittle. And uh, when film becomes brittle, the very first steps of that are rounding, uh, like you see, uh, as in like the reflection right here. Uh, you see the film isn't completely flat. And what happens is the film actually, uh, they call that film curl. And uh, that's the very early stages of film becoming brittle. But after you've reached that point, uh, the film actually becomes so brittle it can break in several pieces and uh, become impossible to scan in. This particular reel of film was from 1951 and indeed had become so brittle that it was breaking after every few inches and made uh, a continuous run of this film entirely impossible. And here's even more of a close-up view of deteriorated 8mm film. As you see, it becomes brittle and splits in many directions. Uh, it's so brittle, in fact, that sometimes it can crack upon the film being unreeled from the roll itself. In other words, as you're loading it into the machine, it will break. Um, yes, film can become that delicate. As I explained earlier in this video, color film was introduced by Kodak in 1936 for the 8mm format. And this footage we're about to see here is of Christmas 1937. So this is amongst the earliest color footage in existence. And in fact, this is the earliest color footage we've ever handled. After color was introduced to 8mm film in the 1930s, the next big advancement was Super 8 film. The quickest way to tell the difference between Standard 8 and Super 8 is that center hole right there. It is larger in the Super 8 formats. And the difference uh, doesn't just stop there. And here's a side-by-side -side comparison between Standard 8 film and Super 8. As you can see, the Standard 8 film has larger sprocket holes, which means with the smaller holes, the Super 8 footage actually has a 20% larger film area, which means you have 20% more picture quality. And here's an example of commercially produced, pre-filmed 8mm movie reels. Uh, it's ironic because most of those reels of film were put on red reels, and the film has a tendency to turn red. Very red. And here's a brief clip of that commercially produced uh, reel of film. As you can see, it's very, very red, uh, well beyond the point of being actual usable footage. And uh, professionally what's done in situations like this is we generally remove the color uh, and y you get a black and white image with much more detail, but um, unfortunately there's not a whole lot that can be done. Uh, the, the other dyes have deteriorated too much. The film is simply too far gone. And here's a strip of the Super 8 commercially produced film that I showed you earlier. I wanted to point out two things. Uh, first of all, the red tint uh, you know, when the film ages, especially commercially produced film, that red uh, happens as a result of the blue dye in the film fading. Now the second thing I wanted to show you was the magnetic audio strip at the very bottom of that reel of film there. That little black strip down there at the bottom. Uh, and what that was was just a little strip of magnetic recording tape, uh, just like was used on a standard cassette tape, only about one quarter the size. Um, the sound quality from that was absolutely dreadful, but technically it was sound. There were several variations on the classic film projector. This is a Kodak unit from the 1960s. And this is a Bell and Howell projector from the 1970s. They all had basically the same design. Um, they were mechanically 
identical, but there were some differences in the appearance of the machines. And that concludes today's episode of Vintage Tech Spotlight. As you could see, there was a lot of resolution in those old films. However, to really unlock that resolution, you need modern equipment and modern techniques. That's where Digital Restoration Services comes in. Thank you for watching. Click like and subscribe, and I'll see you on the next episode. Thank you again.